Oh, hi. I'm KLK. I like to make XIV videos about getting better at raiding. And this one is going to be a bit more technical and less meme than normal. So you should only watch if you're a real study maxer and improvement pilled. Okay, so FF logs. I think to a lot of raiders, FF logs is just a website that they use to track their funny numbers and occasionally look at their crit rates so they can complain about it and use it as an excuse for their bad damage. Cot, cot, cot. It's okay, I've been there too. But if you ignore the whole focus on parse ranking, FF logs is actually an amazing tool for improving yourself as a player in many different ways. So if you or someone in your group is logging and uploading them to the site, you have a lot of information at your fingertips. And if you don't know how to do that, there's a lot of ACT setup guides on YouTube and they can help you get started. Personally, I didn't know how to really read FF logs properly until I was progging my third ultimate. So I'm going to cover all the things that I wish I knew earlier that would have made me improve a lot faster over the years. So getting into the first thing that I love using FF logs for, finding out rotations. I don't mean learning a standard rotation, for that I'd recommend reading a balanced job guide or watching a basic YouTube guide and then hitting a dummy for 20 minutes. But when fights make you take forced downtime, like if you're progging an ultimate with lots of downtime between phases, the best rotation you can do sometimes isn't immediately obvious. And the easy solution to that is to just copy it from the best players. Let's say I'm trying to learn Dragoon and Fru and I notice my Lance Charge and Life Window is getting desynced from my Battle Litany and phase 2 adds because of the funky downtime where you can't target the boss. And I don't know what the best use of my cooldowns are there. This is a good example because I'm legitimately curious and don't know the answer right now. So I could go on YouTube and look up Dragoon POVs, but just because they're uploaded to YouTube doesn't mean it's necessarily the best thing to use as a guide. Mistakes happen and I find a more accurate result is to study the top ranked players on FF logs. Okay, so I'm on the homepage and I'm looking for the top Fru Dragoon logs. All I have to do is go into Ultimates, go to Rankings, and it defaults to Speed Rankings, but we want to check out the Damage Per Second Rankings. And here, we just have to filter the jobs for Dragoon. We have the top DPS Dragoon logs on FF logs for 7.2 patch. Could use 7.1 as well, doesn't really matter, you can check out both, but for 7.2, you can check out the rank 1 Dragoon log, and since we're specifically looking for how to handle phase 2, we can filter to phase 2, we can select the Dragoon player, so in the tables, we can select what we're interested in, which is Lance Charge, Fear Skogol, and Litany. So at a glance, the 6 minute buff is the one we're interested in, and they use Lance Charge at 5.17 into the fight, and they don't use your Skull Goal until 5.26 into the fight. So Lance Charge and Litany do sync up, and your Skull Goal is forced to be delayed. So this is, seems to be what the best option is. Just to double check, we can use the timelines as well, which shows the timestamps of all these button uses. So, yeah, so here we can see Battle Litany, Lance Charge, and your Skogol comes a bit later. I personally like to take the FF logs and plug them into XIV Analysis. Just copy and paste the link directly here and I can look over the timeline. So we're interested in the area over here. So yeah, they use Lance Charge inside of the Light's Rampant downtime, and because of that, it sort of syncs back up with Litany here. And unfortunately, you have to... The best you can do with your Skull is just use it as soon as the boss becomes targetable right before adds. And it comes back up a little late for the 2 minute window, but it's the best option you've got. If we want to go a step further, we can try to figure out exactly when this 517 lens charge is. And for that, I like to look at the replay. So this replay function that FF logs has is actually crazy good for quickly finding things out. So since the lens charge we're interested in is the one at 517, and we can figure out exactly when in the mech that happens and use it as a reference for ourselves. So at 517, that is when the tower in the center spawns with the four-person soak. 
uh, this is 518. So right when the right when you're running in and ready to soak the tower, that is when you need to lance charge. And you're able to find that out just by looking over the replay and comparing the time in the replay with when they use their cooldowns. So without any POV on YouTube, we're able to know exactly when the optimal time to use our downtime lance charges and we'll be able to do better damage. So that's just one example of funky downtime that you can use. You can use this for almost any ability, for any job, in any fight. If we want to be doubly sure, we can look at some of the other Dragoons and see if they have a similar timing. The second Dragoon also uses their Lance Charge in the middle of the downtime. So they use it at 524. Since the kill time could be different, we can just quickly double check and 524 is right after the tower soak. So somewhere in that area seems to be the good time to use Lance Charge. Now we know we need to be pre-using it in the middle of the downtime. So it'll give us the most damage overall in the ad space. Very useful. It's important to know that the rank 1 log may not always be the best fit for you. They could be doing some specific things that are relevant only to their situation, like kill times, specific rotations, or getting mechanics that they might not always get. So if you see something odd, it's important to take a second and ask yourself if their situation directly applies to yours. And also maybe check out a couple of other logs to see if everyone does it. But now I know how to use Lance Charge properly in Fru Phase 2. You can use the same process of looking at top players for practically anything. When they use major healing cooldowns, pot timings, mitigation, and so on and so on. Getting to learn everything what the best players do in a few clicks is so OP. You'd be ignorant not to use that info when it's right there at your fingertips. The next thing I like to use FF logs for is for finding out why people died in pools. You never want to start a new poll without knowing what went wrong in the last one, or it'll just happen again and you'll waste 10 minutes. I do like to recommend that people have some sort of replay clipping software, like Shadowplay, or Steam Overlay, or even Metal, but sometimes you forget to turn them on, or sometimes you don't get a good POV of what happened. By live logging, you can check and immediately see the reason why people died. This is useful in general for efficient progging, but as a healer, it's doubly important to know if the death happened due to your fault or not, so you know if you need to fix or change anything so people don't die to not being healed properly. So as an example, I'm going to take a random wipe that happened to my static not too long ago, and we'll see what happened and why deaths occurred. So we can take this 1% and rage pull and see if anything interesting happened. We go to the deaths tab here to see all the deaths that happened in the pull, and we have 8 and rage deaths, and in phase 2 we have 2 ultraviolet ray deaths and a auto attack death. So the ultraviolet ray, this is the mechanic where you need to spread out with your defamations, aka conga, and it seems like people messed that up. It happens. But right after that, our viper died to auto attacks, it looks like. Right? So we can just click on it to get a bit more information, and yes. So they took normal damage from ultraviolet ray, 80k damage, it brought them to 105k HP, and then they took an auto attack that knocked them down to 8k HP. They received a Helios and they used Second Wind. So the Second Wind and Helios healed them 78k and yet they took another 86k auto attack and got overkilled by 3000 HP. So all I did was use a Helios and if I used just anything else they would have survived and we likely wouldn't have enraged. I'm so stupid, 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 stupid. But yeah, knowing this, I could have saved them if I healed them properly. They died by only 3000 HP overkill. They are so close to living and that likely was the difference on the enrage. Losing a viper right before the 2 minute window, that's a lot of gauge lost. So now I know whenever the tank dies, you really gotta heal the melee and make sure they have more than 100k HP to survive the auto attack. Just an example of knowing how the circumstances are surrounding each death so we know how to fix our mistakes and be a better player, in this case a better healer that can clutch out pulls when people mess up. Third thing I use FF logs for, checking the buffs and debuffs tab. It's kind of self-explanatory, it lists all the buffs and debuffs that happened in the fight. 
and you can actually select both your team or the enemies if it's necessary. Quick example, as an Astro I want to make sure my Divination buff is hitting all 8 players in my party every time I use it. I can go ahead and find Div and looking at it, yeah I'm hitting everyone each time. So that's good, however I do notice that my Macrocosmos here doesn't have the expected hit count. And when I go and check, yeah, it's missing a bunch of people on its third usage. So this is where I use it on the four tether mechanic in phase two. So everyone is forced to split off here, so it can miss everyone pretty easily. I can try to position myself better to hit more people, and if that doesn't work, I know that I'll just have to keep an eye out on my party members and make sure I keep an eye out for anyone that might have missed the macro. So knowing it didn't catch everyone here, I can use that information for future pulls and become more consistent and more aware of anything negative that can impact people's survivability. Very useful. And similarly for the debuffs tab, you can see all the debuffs that our team took. For example, for this dancing green kill, we can see our team took 13 damage downs. Um, wow, pretty impressive if I say so myself. Only 13 damage downs. Usually that number goes to like 20. So lots of good info here condensed and summarized into easy ways of seeing things. Buffs and debuffs, very useful. A quick bonus tip is to use the events tab in a log if you want detailed information. It shows each possible thing that happened in the pool with a timestamp down to the millisecond. You can filter it by individual people, or you can filter it to damage done to see when your button's actually applied, and you can filter it to damage taken to see how much damage the boss did with each attack and how much mitt was on it. I use this one a lot as Astro because the boss damage snapshots are weird in this game, and I want to make sure my CU catches when I want it to. Like, sometimes the damage snaps at the end of the cast bar, and sometimes it snaps right before you take damage. Yippee! We love vagueness, am I right? The last tip I'll cover is using logs to compare cast counts. One way I use this is to track my performance over time. Like last week I got a green in my M8S reclear and this week I got a purple. Hey, that's pretty good improvement, right? Except I got four pieces of gear upgrades between the two clears. I like to constantly be improving, but is this jump in damage solely because of my gear or did I actually play better? When I compare the cast counts between the two clears, in the second one I got 11 more malefics in phase 1, so I definitely did more damage, even ignoring the gear upgrades. Now this could be because I cut unimportant heals, which is a good thing and shows I'm being more optimized, or it could be because I chatted my static co-healer a bit more, which is a bad thing. It's a little complicated to figure out if you're chatting or not, but to quickly summarize, you just have to compare your RHPS to the top ranked combined healer damage pair for your same job pair. And that's a rough benchmark on optimal non-chatting healer duoing. If you're in the ballpark with the top ranked duo, then you're not chatting, you're just playing optimally. So that was the tips I had for using FF logs as a tool for self-improvement and knowledge. I guess to make this video not clickbait, I have to talk about the second part of the video title, huh? Well, the rest of the video is going to be a bit biased towards my own thoughts and opinions, so take it with a grain of salt and don't take it personally. But using FF logs for evil. Easily the most common bad habit that people do is care too much about their parse rank number. These are people that think parse is the number one metric of skill. I see this a lot particularly in newer raiders that are friends with higher level raiders, or people that are playing a role that they're not familiar with, and in both cases they try to take shortcuts to get a good log so that they can feel like they fit in and they're actually better than they are. The end result however is you get people so parse brain that they'll wipe pulls on repeat because they're too busy greeting damage, or they're hotbar staring because they don't know their job yet and they're not paying attention to mechanics, or you get healers that only know how to glare and they don't heal the things that they should be healing. If you're a healer and your median healing parse is a 1 or lower, you should probably consider a role change to a job that doesn't expect you to heal since you're obviously not doing it anyways. But yeah, instead of focusing directly on making your funny number go up, 
You should instead focus on improving your skills, your consistency, and game knowledge. And eventually, your ranks will go up naturally over time. That is a much better mindset to have in my opinion than someone that only chases their oranges and pinks and and ends up just being a bad party member that no one wants to play with. So that's all I have to say on this topic of FF Logs improvement. If you made it this far, thanks for watching. You guys are the real ones. If you're still hungry for KOK content, I've got a couple of other videos that you can check out, or you can sub to me and I'll give you this coupon for one head pat. Anyways, be humble, be curious, and you'll go far. Thanks for watching.